I'm going to color code these to make them easier to look at. I substitute x into my function, and I get negative 2 plus 3. There's 1. And we get the ordered pair, negative 1, 1, and so on. What's the easiest point to choose? Easiest one of these. Which one was easy to do? The zero. Zero is easy because you always get that, right? We like that. Um, no matter how ugly this number is, even if it's a fraction, a decimal, no matter what, if I put a zero in here, we always get this, don't we? We like 0 for that reason. So this, of course, is 0 plus 3, which gives us 3. We have a name for this particular point. What is it? Y intercept. It's at 0, 3. Um, some people, when they graph the y intercept, make this mistake. And I don't want you to do this. A lot of people look at this equation, y equals 2x plus 3, and they think to themselves, I'm going to go to the y intercept and go 3 up. Don't do that. Uh, it's a bad habit to get into, and what will happen is you'll get it confused with your slope. You'll get the idea of moving for the y-intercept and get confused the idea of it with the slope. So you don't want to do that. A um, couple of things about this. This is going to be 2 plus 3. What do we get? 5. Can we anticipate what happens? We have 1, we have 3, we have 5. What comes next? Seven. We can anticipate that it's going to be 7. Now the reason this happens, and it's really important mathematically to see this because we rarely use tables because they're too slow, they're a pain in the butt. What we like to look at is this difference. What was happening every time? It's going up 2 every time x increases 1. And the reason that that happens is because of this number right here. The coefficient on x is how much y changes over how much x changes. We call that the slope. It's always located in front of the x value. Uh, we can graph these points, negative 1, 1, 0, 3, uh, can't count today, 0, 3, 1, 5, and 2, 7. What we want to do, though, is realize that if I wanted another point, wouldn't I go up another 2? Physically, that is up 2. That's what the change in y is. So I'm going to go up 2 for every 1 I go over. And if I go to 3, I'm going to go up to 9. We want to think about why that happens and why I'm going to fill this all in couple of things. Every point on this line makes this equation true. If I wanted to, I could pick a point in between and it would actually work. Any point on this line and any point in between is going to make this equation true. So this is a graph of the solutions to this equation. There's lots of solutions. How many? Billions and billions and billions, yeah. As many as you can imagine. There's an infinite number of solutions on this line. Um, we also want to be able to graph, without doing that, we'd like to be able to graph something like maybe 3 fourths x minus 5. You've graphed using slope and intercept before, so go ahead and uh, find the y-intercept. Graph it and then count the slope. Do we need the same numbers? Hmm? Do we need the same numbers? No, actually, let's use. Uh, in fact, we don't want to make a table. If I used all these numbers right here, I would end up with fractions because of this. All I'm going to do, I'm going to pick one number and get one point. And then I'm going to count my slope for all the rest of my points. Got it? You've done this before yet? Yeah? <coughs> Don't remember? Okay. All right. First of all, can everybody imagine 
if I wanted to make the numbers work out nice, that I would want to pick 4 and 8 and 12 and 16, so that when I take 3 fourths of it, it works out? Does that make sense to everybody? Look, if I made this table, if I pick numbers like uh, negative 1, 0 is always good. But look what happens if I put a 1 here. Does anybody see I get a fraction? And if I put negative 1 in here, I get a fraction. And if I put 2 in here, I get a fraction. And if I put 3 in here, I get a fraction. But if I pick 4, it works out really nice. You see if I put a 4 for x, that it's going to simplify this fraction out. So if I were going to choose some points, I would want to count my x's by 4's. And what would happen is my y's would go up by 3's because of this fraction right here. This is called the slope. Let's put 0 in for x. And what do you get for y? You just get this. I get a 5, yes. We don't really want to put these numbers in because they're going to get really ugly. This is going to be negative 5 and 3 fourths. This is going to be negative 4 and 1 fourth and so on. It's going to be ugly numbers. I would rather pick numbers like 0 and maybe 4, which is going to give me negative 2. If I put 4 in here, can you all see that the 4's cancel out and I get 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Here's what I want to point out. It always works like this. Does everyone see that this went up 3? From negative 5 up to negative 2. And this one went up 4. That's this fraction right there. And it always works this way. That's why you're allowed to count slopes. What I like to do is pick this value, 0, negative 5, which is in y-intercept, which is right here, and count my slope. I go up 3 over 4 because of this slope. From here, go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. And look where I am. I'm at 4, negative 2. If I go up 3 and over 4 more, 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm right there at 8, 1. And it works. It'll always work out really nice that way. And um, I want you all to always draw your lines using a straight edge. Always use something nice and flat. I'll give you a note card for that. And draw your line all the way across your graph. Make sure you go, um, don't just put it in the middle. Later on, if you ever uh, take a test in college or in a, in a large environment, a lot of times they computer grade them. And the computer checks here and here for your graph. And if it's not in there, it counts it wrong. So if you only graphed from here to here, it would be kind of incorrect.